Hello friends, my name is Ariel O'Neill and welcome back to some more Fort Stop Get Lapsed. Today we're taking a look at some oddballs. These are the weird and wonderful cars that are available here in Forza Motorsport and they're a little bit different from everything else. We start with the Hot Wheels Bone Shaker, 402 horsepower, 2,205 pounds of weight. This is the lightest vehicle here today and on paper, with that amount of power and that amount of weight, you'd expect this vehicle to actually be pretty darn decent. It isn't. This is a very, very odd vehicle to drive. I've driven nothing like this in Forza before. It looks like nothing else in Forza. It drives like nothing else in Forza. It basically has a mind of its own. Uh, so you'll be driving along in a straight line and it'll just jitter to the left. Then it'll jitter to the right. And there's no way to really stop that other than to have it in like 3,500 revs barely ticking over. It's just a very, very strange car to drive. It is pretty much uncontrollable to a certain extent. It is potentially the worst car I've ever driven uh, around the Top Gear track for this season. It is not a good car to drive. Um, to be honest with you, I'd probably rather drive the Caterham than this. And the Caterham was awful, but this is just something else. It is a weird, weird vehicle to drive. It's just odd plain odd admittedly if you can get it together it's relatively quick uh, it is the top of c class which it really shouldn't be because with its handling issues you really can't do much with this vehicle um yeah try it for yourself and tell me what you think but personally i think it's awful uh, next up, uh, thankfully a car that isn't awful, this is the Ford Mustang Hot Wheels Edition, 504 horsepower, 3,300 pounds of weight. Uh, again, another one of the Hot Wheels cars, this is basically a 2005 Mustang, uh, with a bunch of body mods and engine mods and all the rest of it. Uh, the Hot Wheels Mustang actually drives great, it's amazing for a muscle car. Uh, you know, the ironic thing is that while this thing may look out of this world, it drives very nicely to the point where you can actually genuinely compare this with the modern muscle cars. You can compare it to the GT350R, the Z28. You know, it handles apart on par with those. I would say, um, in general, this is probably the worst handling of those three. Not by much, admittedly. They're very close. Uh, I would say this has the best straight line speed out of all of them. Uh, I think the Z28 might handle marginally better. But it's honestly not by much. There really isn't too much between uh, this Mustang, the GC350R, and the Z28. A go drive all three of them. Again, they are very similar, but one of them will suit your driving styles because they are very evenly matched, shall we say. I'd still say the GC350R is probably my favourite of the bunch, uh, just because it's the most well-rounded. Uh, but certainly give this Hot Wheels Mustang a go because it is pretty darn good. Next up, we have the Chrysler's Rocket 69, 1,000 horsepower, 4,830 pounds of weight. Unsurprisingly, this is the most powerful vehicle here today. 1,000 horsepower is an awful lot. However, the Rocket doesn't really do much with it. You see, uh, it does have one gear. It has a go gear, and that's basically it. It also can go in reverse, I'd imagine. Um, yeah, you don't really get a whole lot of power out of this vehicle. It is relatively quick. It's surprisingly quiet as well. Uh, in case you don't know, this is essentially a car from Fallout 4. I believe it's nuclear powered, although I could be wrong on that. Um, it's very big. It's very, very wallowy. It's not a particularly good car to drive. It's very boat-like. This is the closest thing to a boat. Uh, here in Fortsmouth Sport 6, although judging by the weather at our track usually, yeah, that's probably a good thing. So at least it will sail uh, if this track ever gets flooded, but the Rocket 69 is not a good car. Um, this is an S-Class car, it's like pretty high up in S-Class as well, and it will not compete with S-Class cars. You could not compare this to say a 430 Scuderia or a Dodge Viper GTS, because no, it won't happen. Uh, it's just too slow around the track. It's not particularly amazingly quick in a straight line. The handling is awful. Yeah, it's uh, it's not a particularly competitive car. Next up, we have the Cadillac XTS Limousine, 304 horsepower, 5,500 pounds of weight. Uh, the XTS Limo is one of the uh, more conventional cars here today, and that's weird to say about a limo. Of course, first ever limo uh, to be featured 
in Forza Motorsport. Uh, the limo, surprisingly good, actually. Um, it does handle its power quite well. Again, it's a 304 horsepower front-wheel drive car. This does have front-wheel drive. Um, and, you know, obviously it's not the quickest of things. You know, 5,500 pounds, you do feel the weight in this car. But, you know, with the, that much power, you'd expect it to at least spin the front wheels a little bit. I don't know if that's down to the gearbox, because the gearbox, the gears on this vehicle are pretty long. Um, but, you know, expect it to say understeer or something. It really doesn't, to be honest with you. It just feels heavy. Um, it's nowhere near as cumbersome as you'd think to drive either. You sort of look at the size of this thing and go, oh, that must be interesting through the corners. It's pretty darn decent. Uh, you don't really feel the size of this vehicle all that much. Uh, admittedly, the XTS is one of the smaller limousines on the market. I believe there is a CTS limo, uh, which is a bit bigger. And that's not in Forza, but that does exist in real life, I think. Um, but yeah, the XTS, pretty decent vehicle, actually, surprisingly enough. Um, I do kind of like driving this. It does make a pretty decent race car as well. I did a race build on one of these well when this car came out. Um, and it was surprisingly good. So, yeah, decent shout. Next up, the Royals Royce Dawn, 563 horsepower, 5,644 pounds. This is the heaviest car of the day. Yep, this car is heavier than a limousine. Um, and this is a two-door GT Roadster. So, yeah, that gives you an idea. Uh, I was kind of deciding between whether to use the Dawn or the Wraith for this episode. I went with the Dawn in the end just because it's the slightly more outlandish, obviously driving this thing in the rain as well. A little bit interesting. Um, I think the Wraith will probably end up going around at some point though, so if you want to see the Wraith go around the track, don't worry, that will go around. Uh, but for now, we have the Dawn. And the Dawn honestly isn't too bad. Uh, the Royals Royces... Uh, they introduced them in Forza Motorsport 5 with the Wraith, and then in 6 they bought the Dawn in. Uh, the Dawn's the better handling of the two, certainly. The Wraith has a lot more power. I think the Wraith stands at about 620-ish horsepower. Um, and that thing just doesn't handle. Uh, it just wants to go sideways all the time. This does occasionally. It's a 563 horsepower rear-wheel drive car. You know, on a good day you could realistically call this a muscle car, I guess. Um, but it will oversteer if you do push it, but it's not particularly uncontrollable. It's nowhere near as bad as the Wraith is. Um, yeah, I didn't mind driving the Dawn, actually, surprisingly enough. Uh, it's a very limited car. There's not really much you can do with it, but, yeah, stock, it isn't too terrible. And finally today, we have the Plymouth Prowler, 253 horsepower, 2,838 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful vehicle here today. Uh, by a relatively decent margin, it's about 50 horsepower down on the XTS limousine. Um, the Prowler is a very good car to drive, actually. Uh, it's a little bit of a dull car to drive. You know, the Prowler is not known for being particularly amazingly exciting in real life, anyways. Uh, you know, it, instead of having a big roaring V8, it has a V6 coupled to an automatic gearbox only, which isn't particularly exciting. Um, speaking of automatic gearboxes though, the one thing about this car is the gearbox sucks. Uh, I think it's a 4 speed. Uh, you don't get out of third really. Uh, the gear ratios are long. That sort of was a running theme for today. Sort of the last three cars uh, do kind of have uh, longish ratios. Uh, with the XTS I can kind of understand. Uh, the Prowler not so much. The gearbox just isn't great on this vehicle. It's not quite as bad as it is on a Jeep Grand Wagoneer, which probably has the worst gearbox of anything in the game. But it's not fantastic, admittedly. Uh, but overall handling characteristics, though, is good. If you throw an upgraded gearbox in this thing, uh, I'm sure it works surprisingly decent. Hell, if you throw the NASCAR engine in this, as I found out when I built one of these again when this car first came out, surprisingly good race car, actually, with the NASCAR engine. So, yeah, definitely check the Prowler out if you haven't already. Anyways, onto the times, and the fastest car of today is the Ford Mustang Hot Wheels, going into 45th with a 123.221. Wedges itself straight between the GT350R and the Z28 Camaro. So yeah, uh, pretty respectable time. So, as you can see, the GT350R is slightly quicker, Z28 is slightly slower. 
Moving down the board, we find the Rockets in 79th with 127.589. See what I mean about that PI now? That's an S-Class car, and it's sort of hanging around uh, B-Class cars, mid-B-Class cars at that. Yeah, the Rocket just isn't particularly impressive or quick. Down the board once more, we find the Royals Royce Dawn in 113th for 130.720, and the Plymouth Prowler in 114th for 130.721. Yeah, those two cars are ridiculously close. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I set those times. It's like, th these cars were that close, and they couldn't be further apart when you think about it, you know. The Prowler's down 300 horsepower on the Dawn, and it's down, you know, 3,000 pounds as well. It's insane. Uh, the Bone Shaker goes into 131st with a 132.021. Again, another very close time with the R32 and Focus RS being within a thousandth of each other down that board. Yeah, very close times. The Bone Shaker just isn't a particularly good vehicle to drive again. It really probably shouldn't have got that time. And finally today, the XTS Limo goes into 183rd with a 141.087. Uh, nothing particularly close to it. It's a little bit slower than an Escort RS 1800. Bit quicker than the Ram Runner and Opal Cadet. A pretty decent showing from the limousine considering the weight of that thing. Anyways, friends, I want to thank you all very much for watching. Next time, we're going to be taking a look at some of the more, even more of the slowest cars of Forza Motorsport 6. So join me for that. Anyways, friends, I want to thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.